Julie Ryan, noted psychic and medical intuitive, is ready to answer your personal questions, even those you never knew you could ask. For more than 20 years, as she's developed and refined her intuitive skills, Julie used her knowledge as a successful inventor and businesswoman to help others. Now, she wants to help you grow, heal, and get the answers you've been longing to hear. Do you have a question for someone who's transitioned? Do you have a medical issue? What about your pet's health or behavior? Perhaps you have a loved one who's close to death and you'd like to know what's happening. Are you on the path to fulfill your life's purpose? No matter where you are in the world, take a journey to the other side and ask Julie Ryan. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all around the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. We got a bunch of callers on hold, so I'm excited to talk with them and see what they have to say and ask. And uh, what's going on here? Everything's gorgeous. Everything's in bloom. You've heard me say that for a few weeks. Our spring down here in the deep south lasts, I think, about two full months. It's amazing. And I even have roses starting to bloom. So my heart goes out to all of you that are in that track of that blizzard. My goodness, that has really been something for you guys. And, uh, and I hope it melts fast. So my brother's, one brother lives in Chicago, another brother's in Chicago. And apparently it bypassed downtown Chicago where one of them is and uh, went up to Wisconsin. But my goodness. So um, hi, Covino. I see you've joined us. I'm going to mute you and I'll come back to you. Uh, so anyways, everything's good here and we are in wedding countdown. We've got, actually, it's a month from today. So May 11th. So we're in wedding countdown mode here. Tim <laughs> power washed in the driveway and the um, sidewalk getting ready because he thinks it looked dirty. So <laughs> it's cute that he's doing all of that. All right, let's go ahead and go to the phones and let's see who's joined us this week. I think our first caller is Kathy. Hi, Kath. Hi, Julie. How are you, girl? Oh, I'm pretty good. I'm doing it. Doing good. Okay. Please tell everybody where you're calling in from. I'm calling from Dayton, Ohio. Dayton. All right. What's going on up there? Well, I... As I mentioned to you briefly earlier, I wanted to, not much is going on other than spring here too, uh, spring allergies for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah. But um, thankfully the weather's, the weather's, you know, pretty good. But um, as you know, um, and I mentioned to you earlier today by email, um, gosh, I realized today it was 2015 when I first called in to you and had my first one-on-one with you also. Um, and that was right when my dad had had his first stroke and was starting to go downhill um, and have mm-hmm. more dementia. And now here we are. We're probably, I don't know how close, but very close to now him passing. And um, mm-hmm. I went up, my, went up and saw him. It's about a two-hour drive from here. And joined my mom and, and spent the day. And, and I'll be going up as much as I can. So I was just curious what, um, you know, it, it seems like this definitely is, going into the end and that it may go rather fast but who knows it may not so um uh and he isn't articulate he's bed bound he can't really um he was at hospice for several days and and uh, now mom's trying to find a new place for him where they can have a higher level of care because he's deteriorating so quickly so it, Mm -hmm. it definitely feels like you know we're moving toward the end and anything you see um you know, that he wants to communicate to me if he can still at this point. I don't know what kind of state he's in. Um, And just any information you could give me that might be comfort to my mom and I and my sister. Yes, absolutely. And Kathy, I know your dad's name's Jack, just because I've seen him so many times for you. And um, what I'm going to do, everybody, is I'm going to connect to Kathy. And from Kathy, I'm going to connect to her dad, Jack. And Jack, for, my gosh, Kathy, what, over a year has been in phase 11 of the 12 phases of transition, hasn't he? Oh, longer than that. Like I a couple probably, years even, maybe. I'd say at least two, at least two years, maybe even a little more, because like I said, it was 2015, the first time I called in. Yeah. Wow. 
Well, yeah. but he wasn't in those advanced stages right off the bat, <clears throat> that's, if I remember that's correctly. True. Yeah, that's true. Now he is basically nonverbal and his body's mm-hmm. getting, you know, for people who've been around someone who's getting ready to pass, their body starts to kind of contort a bit and pull, up, like his knees are up to his chest almost. He mm-hmm. can't put his legs out anymore. And so mm-hmm. all those kind of things that show the end is coming are there. Kind of like in a fetal position almost, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And like I said, he can't really talk, but I was able to um, to, to talk to him. I mean, I got to say everything I wanted to say. I cried, mm-hmm, I hugged him, I held him. And a part of him knew I was there and, and understood, but a part of him didn't. But I, I got to do what I needed to do, and I feel complete. If he would happen to pass before I get back, I feel like I did and said everything. I want. told him what a family told him what a fantastic father he was and how much I loved mm-hmm. him. And so I mm-hmm. feel, I feel complete just, um, you know, now we, we wait for the, the final pieces here. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, so I'm going to connect to Jack through you, Kathy. And what I'm talking about to those of you that perhaps are first time listeners, the 12 phases of transition are how angels and our deceased loved ones are positioned around us as we're dying. And it's really a glorious sight. And uh, the spirit exits the body through, through the, it detaches from the body, really, is a better way to describe it, and hangs on to the top of the head as somebody is dying. And it looks like a bubble. It looks like the, the bubble that you see in a cartoon where the words or the character's thoughts are. And graphics of the 12 phases of transition are on my website, AskJulieRyan.com. You can even download a chart of them, which a lot of people tell me they do, Kathy, and they say it's just really comforting to the family to be able to see really how their loved one is surrounded by angels and their deceased loved ones and pets, too. They're deceased pets as well. So here we go. Here comes my laser beam. I'm heading up to you in Dayton. Got you going to your dad. Okay. So your dad is in the last stages of phase 11. Phase 12 is when he's escorted to heaven. His spirit has already started to enter a vortex that is above his head, Kathy. And that helps. The vortex helps the body separate from the spirit. And it has an upward pull to it. It reminds me of driving through a car wash when you stay in the car and you get to the end and the water's getting sucked off of your car with a dry, that big dryer that they turn yeah. on. And so let's ask them some questions. Are you ready to go? Yes. Are you in pain? No. What do you need, my family? That's what he's told us for a couple of years. Do you have any yeah. particular questions for him, Kathy? Um. Oh gosh. Um I guess I I guess I don't. I I I wanted to know if he was in pain cuz it seemed like he was. Um mm-hmm. and I couldn't tell if he really knew I was there like when I cuz I really cried and and poured my heart out to him cuz I didn't know if I'd mm-hmm. see him again while he's alive since I live a few hours away, a couple hours away. Um Right. So I I couldn't tell for sure if he knew it was me, but I assume he, I mean, I guess that's why I guess that's all I would like to know is, did he hear me? Was he, oh, oh, you know, was he able to, to take in what I was able to say to him and hugging him and loving him? And I put my hand, Absolutely. I, felt led to, I put my hands on his chest. I was really led to do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he absolutely knew. And even when when somebody's dying and they're not able to communicate, their spirit knows you're there. And it's like they have one foot in the in the spirit world and they have one foot in our human world. So one foot in the non-physical, one foot in the physical. And and even when people are talking with doctors when a loved one is dying and they're out in the hallway because they don't want the person to hear what they're talking about, the person who's dying knows what they're talking about. <laughs> Just they yeah. can, their spirit knows what's going on. So, Kathy, in the interim, you know, you can talk to him at any time. You just say something to him in your head or out loud if you want. It doesn't matter. And the first thing that pops in your head is going to be him replying to you. Because we can all communicate telepathically both with people who have deceased, our loved ones who are deceased, and also loved ones who are alive. And so you you can communicate with him now while he's still alive, even when you're not with him physically. 
Okay, yeah. you, you can communicate with him telepathically. So keep us posted. Let us know what happens. And our hearts go out to you. My heart goes out to you. And, um, you know, I think you guys have done a magnificent job of, of taking care of him as he's had this long decline. So, yeah, I, I, long you know, hang in there. Yeah, thank you, Julie, so much. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Take Thanks, care. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see who's next. I believe our next caller is Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, this is Linda Stern. How are you? Yes. I'm from yeah. Columbia, South Carolina. That's right. How are you? I'm doing well, but um, my little fur buddy, my dog, uh, is not doing as well. Um, Uh-oh. What's he, going on? I mean, he seems to be okay now, but the groomer has seen a cyst on his leg. So I took him hmm. to the veterinarian, and when she done, like I think it's called aspiration, they found blood, and she wanted mm-hmm. to take the cyst off and get it over to a oncologist, pathologist. And I don't mm-hmm. feel that we should because if he has cancer, I don't want to have to put him through chemo and all that. Is there any mm-hmm. way that you can tell me if he has cancer or not? Sure, sure. What's his name? Buddy. Buddy, B-U-D-D-Y, buddy? B-U-D-D-Y, yes, ma'am. Okay. And what kind of dog is he, Linda? He's uh, a rescue dog. He's between a a Shih Tzu and a Lasso Opso, they think. Uh And he's around 10 years old, they think. (laughs) So he's a foo-foo dog. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how cute. I bet he he's beautiful. Bark. He's very laid back. Um, everybody loves Buddy because he's just so well-behaved. Doesn't, uh-huh. like I said, very, very good disposition. Oh, that's probably because yeah. he has such a great great owner, right? Oh, Who, yeah. <laughs> My daughter says they, that we we pay more attention to him than we ever did her. <laughs> oh, my God. I doubt that. But what I'm going to do, Linda, is I'm going to connect into you, and then from you, I'll connect to Buddy, and let's see what's going on. So here we go. Thank here comes you. my laser beam. I'm raising my vibrational level to level of spirit. I close my eyes. I watch a laser beam go from my body here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's going to head into you, head to you in Columbia and Gamecock land, and then I'm going to... Um, connect from you to buddy so here we go all right got you got him okay all right so i'm seeing the energy went linda to to an area that's behind his left front leg almost like is that where it is yes ma'am yeah all right that's what i'm seeing okay let me see uh it does not look malignant to me um, I'm getting a no on that because what I just asked, is it malignant? I get a no. It's a, some type of a cyst. So I'm just going to do a little healing on him and we'll just get it. We'll just get it removed. When I see a cyst or I see clusters of cells in humans or in animals and they look suspicious, this does not look malignant to me, Linda, but if it looks malignant, especially I put it in a, in a membrane. So that when I remove it, all the cells come with it. Because sometimes I think when we cut into tumors and things like that, those little cells get dispersed. Right. And um, and I want to keep that handled. So, okay. So I've got it in a membrane, kind of like putting it in a plastic bag almost that's sealed. And now I'm watching it get extracted from his body. This is just an energetic healing that's happening on him. Does he seem to be lethargic or in pain? No. Um, in fact, he seems more active and he eats and he, you know, um, yeah. and that's what confused me. <laughs> yeah. No, I think he's going to be fine I, unless it Can gets really big. <laughs> yeah. I, oh. it, does not, it does not look malignant to me. I think, I think he's going to be just fine. I'll just let him do his thing. Oh, thank you so, so much. You are welcome. Oh, You're welcome. You just you made my day, my evening, my year. <laughs> oh, you can certainly get him tested, but I, I just don't no, think. We, she, she had made mention that if they do a biopsy, where it is located, that 
it would, when they take it off, she couldn't take the whole thing off because she would have to stretch the skin and it would be almost like a tourniquet. And I thought, mm-hmm. no. And then plus, if, if it was cancer, I don't want him to have to go through chemo. And um, it only gives him maybe one more year of life. I'd rather have mm-hmm. qual- quality time more than quantity. I agree. I agree. I th- I think he looks fine. I think it's a little cyst. It's going to be interesting. I, I don't see any reason why that body, especially after that healing that just happened on him, I think there's a good chance the body will absorb it and it just isn't going to be a non-issue. Thank you. I'm doing a happy dance. You're welcome. Thank you. You're okay, girl. Okay, let us know okay. what happened. Okay. I will. I will. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for calling. Bye. Okay. Let's see who we have next. I think it's Miss Patty. Hi, Patty. Oh hi, hi there. How are you? I'm I'm good. I know I talked good, to you please. earlier, and I'm so glad to be able to talk to you. And and um, so again, I have those yellow rollers. So, um, well, okay, first of all, we, tell everybody where you're calling from, please. From um from Danville or from um. Oh, I can't even think straight, Julie. I'm so embarrassed. Um, Danville, California. Okay. All right. Which is in, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yes. 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 And and what Patty's talking about, you guys, is before we started the call, she said, she said, I have yellow curlers in my hair. If I ask you to scan me, will that interfere with it? I, Patty, that is so <laughs> priceless. So what is, I really thought, oh, my God, she'll probably. Go oh, what in the world? <laughs> so, um, so Julie, um, I have this burning, and mm-hmm. I was told that I needed a, a neck operation. I think you probably remember that, and that they would do, um, um, you know, a fusing. And then I went to two doctors. They both told me the same thing, and now I'm seeing somebody that is working on me and saying that he can take care of it, but I still have the burning, but I also Mm -hmm. have a blood condition and I don't know where the burning's coming from. And I don't know, should I be doing the operation? Can I heal it myself? Um, I don't know who to believe. I don't know what to think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. I'm scared and depressed. I bet. Okay. So what I'm going to do, Patty, is I'm going to, I'm going to connect into you, and then from you, um, we'll see what comes up. And I've scanned Thank you before you. on this, so yes. let's see if anything different comes up. So here and we go. Here sure I don't have cancer or anything, you know. Yeah, well, here, even if you do, can't, everything can be healed. I have yet to see anything that can't be healed. By the way, i got to tell you this quick story to you and everybody that's listening. I had a private client yesterday who's – daughter baby girl was born with a third of her brain and the doctors said she's just you know we don't know that she's going to survive and all of that and so I watched the healing happen on her and I use stem cell energy to generate new brain matter it's still generating over 24 hours later but the cavity in her skull that's empty is now full of brain matter I mean oh you guys my God. the stuff I is so amazing that I, after 25 years of doing this, I believe that anything can be healed. Now, it's the spirit's choice what to do with yeah. that, but the stuff I've seen, these healings, are just mind-blowing. I mean, I, what a privilege for me. It makes me weepy, some yeah. of this stuff I see, but this, this baby girl, I think, is going to amaze everybody. I think she's going to oh. live a normal life. It's amazing. That's amazing. So, amazing. wow. My point is, everything can be healed. So, everybody's so afraid of getting cancer, but I watch cancer get healed all the time. Good. So, here we go, Patty. Here's my laser beam. Got you. Okay, shooting energy. All right, turning you around. I have a I have a hologram of you in my mind's eye. Turned around to the back. I'm looking at the back of your neck. So. The fusing, yes, will help. Is it imperative that you have surgery? No. Can you heal it on your own? Yes. Will the surgery heal it? Yes. 
Can you heal it on your own? Yes. The surgery will probably help you heal faster, but it doesn't mean that healing on your own won't be as good. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so I can I, uh, I think our, oh. our bodies have just a tremendous capacity to heal, Patty. And I think that sometimes when we have surgery, it just speeds the healing process. I have a girlfriend who fell. She was an OR nurse and she fell at work and broke her back. And the workers comp people and the insurance people and all that were going round and round. Well, it got to the point where she was just so sick of dealing with it that she just said, forget it. I'm not going to have surgery. I'm not going to do anything. And you know what? It took about a year, but her back is totally healed and she doesn't have any pain. That's amazing. Well, I mean, well there's lots of the stories. one doctor, the one doctor I asked, I said at the end, I said, well, how long will this last? And he said, well, that's a good question. It'll probably last about five years. And I've heard mm-hmm. from other people, oh, my God, then the joint above gets, you know, in trouble. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I've been afraid of it. Mm-hmm. Can you yeah. work with it and heal it, Julie? Yeah. We've been, I've been zapping on you multiple times. And it, it's healing. Thank you. It's just, it's coming. You've got to, your body's healing. It's just taking longer than, when you, than you'd like just because you're in pain. And I also have a stenosis. Do you see mm-hmm. that? A stenosis? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do. And we've and worked do on I that too. In, yeah. You do not, I do not see any pinched nerves. I have in the Good. past with you, but I'm not seeing now. We've worked oh, on that. Wow. Oh, yeah. thank you. So but you're is healing the burning from this wet, honey? You're healing. Oh, thank you. Is the burning because of the neck or could it be because of this blood condition I have or because anything of your neck. else? Okay. It's your neck. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think, Wait, I ask one more thing. I, I do something called Qigong. Is that helpful? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. And I think either decision that you make, Patty, whether you decide to have the surgery or whether you decide to let it heal on its own, I think either decision is right. You cannot okay. make a wrong decision. Both decisions are okay. right. So you do what you feel is best in your heart of hearts, what feels the best to you, and follow that. Thank you. And You're I'll welcome. Thanks for calling I'll call you and have you keep working on me. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Julie. Really. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Okay. Let's see who's next. I believe our next caller is Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> How are you? Me. I'm uh, pretty good, pretty good. I'm a second-time caller. I appreciate you Great. being here. The conversations are so interesting. And you seem like a very incredible healer. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, my goodness. I'm calling from San Ramon, California. And um, I was just wondering, Julie, uh, can you tell me, is there, are there any messages uh, from the other side that someone would want me to know about anything? Anybody in particular you want to talk to, Deborah? Uh, Would that be helpful or? Yeah. Yeah, just from a time standpoint. Okay. Um, Well, interesting. The first caller is from Dayton, Ohio. I grew up there. And uh, my dear beloved father, uh, right near Avon Lake, uh, just passed in January. And Mm. uh, he had a very good life. Um, It was an elegant death. um, And that sounds strange, but it was really an an amazing you know, good, bad thing to watch, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I mean, he was so dearly loved and surrounded by love and lots of care and everything. But I, I would wonder if, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if there's anything he would want to say. Uh, sure. To what is the, his name? What was his name, Deborah? Uh, uh, William. 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 William Ray. Did he go by William? Uh, either William or, or Bill. Bill. Okay. All right. He's standing right next to you. I'm already connected to you. They always know when we're talking about him. It's so cute. So, and they always stand to the right of the person that's 
asking questions about them. So, Mr. Bill, what do you have to tell your baby girl? She's fabulous. She's darling. She's magnificent. Those are nice adjectives. Um, he wants you to get more rest. He says you're not you're you're doing too much. You're not getting enough rest. That sounds like something a mother would say, doesn't it? Uh, have you been doing too much? Are you burning the candle, girl? Uh, well, I, I am and I'm not. I'm actually, uh, I have been just kind of in the past couple of days, but for an entire year, I've been really laying low, you know, just okay. with deep sadness, you know, with with the passing. I've had this, uh, I, when I was very little, like 10 years old, I asked, I went to my mother and she was on the couch. It's like an existential question you ask of your mother. <laughs> I don't know how many people do this, but I asked her, I said, will I ever see you and dad after we die? You know, so mm-hmm. this has kind of been this huge energy with me. Mm-hmm. For so long, mm-hmm. and um, you know, so for 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 this passing, it's just it's really difficult. However, I do uh, know that th- th- they're there, they're there, and they're there somewhere in spirit. And uh, anyhow, I'll be quiet. <laughs> well, they're around you all the time. First of all, is your, your mother's deceased as well? No, no, she's with, she's, she's still with very, you. Okay, so your yeah. dad's spirits around you all the time. And other deceased loved ones too. Have you read my book yet, Deborah? Angelic Attendance. No. no. Get a copy of it. It's called Angelic Attendance: What Really Happens as We Transition from This Life into the Next. And it's an audio book, paperback, and also digital that you can read it on a Kindle or on your computer. And I think it will give you a lot of peace and a lot of comfort. Plus, the stories in it are really heartwarming and they're funny and they're just you know really sweet. And it's stories about families with whom I've worked when they have a loved one who's dying. And I think that will bring you a lot of peace. The other thing, what I was talking to Kathy, our first caller from Dayton about, I think pertains to you too and to anybody listening who wants to communicate with somebody who's deceased. We all can do it. We all have the ability, Deborah. And it's just a matter of asking a question or making a comment in your head. You know, think of your dad ask him a question or make a comment. And then the first thing that pops in your mind within a second is going to be him responding. And it's Uh telepathic communication. Spirits communicate telepathically. And it, a lot of people get confused or they discount it because it just feels like it's a thought in their head. And it is, it feels like one of your regular thoughts, but it's your loved one communicating with you. Okay. Very so good. try, I like try that. that. The, the other thing to remember, Deborah, is that spirits are really literal, really, really, really literal. So if you want specific information from your dad or from anybody, ask the question and be as concise as you can in the question you're asking. Okay. Okay. Very good. And and um, and you'll get answers. And the more you do it, the more answers you're going to get. And that's what I teach in my training, angelic attendant training. And the next, I started a class on Saturday and we have a great group. And then my next class is going to be in July. So go to my site, AskJulieRyan.com and check that out because you may want to want to join us. I teach people how to do all this stuff that I do and it happens fast and it's, you know, it's really helpful and it's fun to watch the magical things that unfold in their lives as we do it. But get a copy of my book. And I really think that's going to help you feel better and it's going to give you a lot of information. Okay, too. very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks sure. for calling. Thank you. you bet. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Okay. okay. Let's see who we have next. I believe it's Susie. Hi, Suze. Hi, Julie. Thank you, Thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I'm You're welcome. calling from the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm so happy to hear about Buddy, by the way. I'm so happy to hear Patty. I was just driving past Patty's house today on the way to the doctor, and I thought of her, and then she called and left a message while I was at the doctor, so that was pretty amazing. And um, mm-hmm. I was at the doctor because I dropped a big tube of, a brand new tube of toothpaste on my foot last night, and I, it hurt a lot at the time when it happened, but then I just went to bed, and at 4 a.m. or so, I was up just peeling and at 5 a.m. I finally got some ice but it wasn't it wasn't getting any better throughout the day and there was a big bump kind of near the 
below the big toe on the right foot. So I went to the doctor, but he's the same doctor who missed seeing a hairline fracture that two other doctors saw, but he was the only one available today for an x-ray. And he came in and he, he was pushing his, you know, moving his hands back and forth saying, well, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't hundred percent, can't hundred percent see a fracture, but I do have bone density issues and I've missed mm-hmm. a stress fracture and a hairline fracture before. So I really wanted to call you to get confirmation of if you see any kind of fracture, you know, on that right top of that right foot, um, okay. either below the big toe or anywhere along that, <laughs> between there in the middle. So thank you. Okay. You bet. Here we go. Here comes my laser beam. Getting you on my radar. Okay. Got you. Uh, it does not look broken to me, Susie. It looks like a big old bruise. So I'm going to okay. calm that down with anti-inflammatory energy. I do not see a break. I see a bruise. Great. He said uh, there's a cyst I, there, but he said maybe the cyst got activated or something because the bone is like protruding there. Um, yeah. I mean, not you know through the skin, obviously, but he just it's not it's not on the left side, but it is on the right. But he said just ignore the cyst. But he said maybe that's. Are you seeing the cyst? Or? Uh, I'm seeing a big old hematoma, which is like oh. a big old bruise, big old you know. Okay. It's from and does the it show injury. The, um, does it show the tendon? The, the tendon's on that same foot. Are you seeing that? Um, and that's been hurting recently too. And I'm, I'm still still trying to avoid surgery on that tendon. Are you seeing the tendon looking any better? Or on your you, heel? On, on the back of your uh, foot? Um, on, on the on the right side of the ankle. It's the uh, yeah. pronius brevis yeah. tendon that's torn. Right, right. It's healing, Susie. It's not completely okay. healed, but it looks better than it has in in. Um, past weeks when you've called it. I'm I'm about ready to put you in solitary confinement. I know. I know. It's very embarrassing. I was wearing the boot today just to be safe. And I thought people, you know, people just wonder how, how can I be, how clumsy can I be? (laughs) So so thank you. And, you know, Julie, I'm just curious, do you, the LQ, LQ10 or something, is that something that you see in my best interest to take the liquid? I started taking it a week ago and I haven't been feeling that great on it. I don't know. It's hard to tell whether something is related to taking it or not. You know, I'm talking about the CQ10, LQ10. Yeah, take it in take it in a capsule form. You don't need to take a liquid. Okay, because I've been taking the liquid, and is that what's making me feel kind of off, you think? Yes, that... yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank yes. you. Take, it, really... take it in the capsule form. Okay, and thank you Costco. very much. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, Costco. Costco has a Costco? really good one. Yeah. Okay, they're also selling the liquid turmeric, and I'm taking the capsules, and they said the turmeric is hard to absorb unless you take liquid. Is that true? Should I go ahead and take the liquid of the turmeric? Turmeric is hard, hard for people to absorb, period. So I would take capsules over the liquid. Oh, okay. I keep taking the capsules. That's what I've been doing. So, Okay, great. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. They have, the, right. have it on special in the rebate coupon today, the, um, the Q10 tablets or something. So thank you, Dooley. Many blessings to you. Thank you. Take Love care. your show. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, God bless Dizzy. I'm going to put her in solitary confinement here so she quits breaking stuff. All right. We do this show every Thursday night, you guys, at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. The call in number is 712-770-4160, and the access code is 533-677-POUND. You can find this information a whole bunch of different places. It's on my website, AskJulieRyan.com, on the homepage. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll see it. It's on the show notes, anywhere you download podcasts. We're on a bunch of different networks, and you'll see it in the show notes. It's in a blog posting that I send out every week, usually on Wednesdays, and you'll get a, it's a question that somebody has submitted online, and then I answer it. And in the body of the email, it has the call-in information. So you can check that out there. I also post it on social media. You can follow me at Ask Julie Ryan on Instagram and also Ask Julie Ryan on Facebook. And I always put a little note up the day of the show, usually midday, reminding you, hey, call in, join us. So um, look at it there. When you're on my site, remember to sign up for a private appointment. And then I have a whole hour to talk to you and we can talk about whatever you want. 
I tell people I'm a businesswoman that learned how to do woo-woo and I'm a buffet of psychicness. <laughs> so as you hear in the show, I can scan you medically. We can scan your pets. I can uh, talk to your deceased loved ones. We can tell how close to, de- to death someone is if you have a loved one who's dying like Kathy does. And um, what else? Past life stuff, career stuff, love life stuff, whatever. It's all just a blast. And we will get a bunch of information and we'll have fun doing it. Even if it's something serious, it's, we always laugh a lot. So that's fun. And then sign up for my blog when you're on my site too. And then you'll get the email of what the question is each week. And also remember to sign up for the free drawing that I do every month. I do it on the first Thursday of the month. And all you have to do is follow me on Instagram at Ask Julie Ryan. Sign up for my blog and write a review on iTunes about the show. And just go to iTunes.com slash Ask Julie Ryan and you can write a review. And then you might win a free one hour with me, which would be very fun to talk to you. Okay, here's this week's question. comes from Katerina in Strongsville, Ohio. And she said, hi, Julie. My husband is recovering from a Whipple surgery for pancreatic cancer. He was scanned this past Wednesday. Can you feel if I should be worried about what these scans may show? Is there anything I should focus on? He's 38 years old and was 36 when he was diagnosed. Looking for help since it's just sit and wait with the doctors. Thanks, Katerina. And here's my response. Hi, Katerina. My heart goes out to you and your husband. I can only imagine what you must be going through. In order to get an update for you, I connected to you and from you to your husband. He gave me permission to do an energetic scan on him. I will scan anybody without their permission, you guys. I just don't think it's right. I think it's, it's unethical to do that. And I believe it's an invasion of somebody's privacy. So I, I can do it. I won't do it. Just a little side note there. I went on to say, first and foremost, at this moment in time, your husband is not dying. His spirit is very firmly entrenched in his body. When someone is dying, their spirit separates from their body and attaches to the top of their head. It looks like the bubble containing a character's thoughts or comments in a cartoon. This phenomenon is what I call the 12 phases of transition, and your husband isn't there. That's what we were talking about with Kathy, our first caller, whose dad, Jack, is dying. Second, I could see, and I put that in quotes, in my mind's eye where the Whipple surgery was performed. The Mayo Clinic says the Whipple procedure is an operation to remove the head of the pancreas, the first part of the small intestine, the gallbladder, and the bile duct. The remaining organs are reattached to allow the patient to digest food normally after surgery. So, to help your husband continue to improve, I watched stem cell energy reinforce the areas that had been surgically removed. This healing will hopefully help your husband more easily digest the food he eats and, more importantly, retain the nutrients from that food. Next, I watched an energetic healing occur that involved his DNA. It's called genome editing and restores corrupted DNA, and I put in parentheses, the recipe that tells our cells how to behave or how to replicate, in parentheses, back to its normal precancerous state. This will help his body produce healthy cells. I, I do this all the time with cancer patients, you guys. I watch strands of DNA come out of a chromosome. They look like strips of paper that you find in a fortune cookie that the fortune is written on. I watch the letters in the DNA, which are ATCG. There can be 100,000 letters. There can be a billion letters. I watch them get rearranged. Reminds me of playing Scrabble, where you'll take a letter up and move it over to form a word. I watch it happen. It's in warp speed. And then when it's reprogrammed back to normal, I watch it snap back into the chromosome. And so cancer is really tricky because those cells mutate. So if I'm working with a cancer patient long term, I will... um, do that genome editing frequently, usually a couple times a month, and we can stay ahead of those cells um, that are mutating and bring them back to normal, bring the recipe back to normal. And it seems to be working really well. Okay, lastly, please get a copy of Radical Remission by Kelly Turner, PhD. It's full of remarkable stories about people from around the world, world who cured their, quote, terminal illnesses and the common denominators they shared in their healing journeys. Hope this information helps. Hugs to you and your husband. 
That Radical Remission, you guys, is the most important book I've ever read about cancer. If you know anybody that's dealing with cancer, send them a copy or buy them a copy of Radical Remission or tell them to get a copy at the library. It is that life-altering, and it's just terrific. So thanks for your note, Katrina, and good luck to you and your husband. Okay, let's go back to the phones and see who else we have here. I believe our next caller is Topeka. Hi, Topeka. Hi. How are you? Hello. Good. Hi. Hi. Good. How are you? Good. Um, I'm doing great. I thought I'd ask a question about myself this week because I was on for the first time ever last week and I asked about somebody else. And um, Uh huh. And okay. So I have, um, I actually had surgery um, about literally a year ago um, as we speak, and it was, um, there was like this major growth happening on one of my ovaries, and they didn't Mm -hmm. know what it was, and since my mom actually had, uh, unfortunately, she did have ovarian cancer and passed away from it, you know, many, many years ago, like 10 years ago, Mm -hmm. they really wanted to do surgery, and I had hummed and hooed and hawed for quite a while and delayed it for as long as possible and finally decided to do it. And so they took, you know, they took out the ovaries, both of them, in fact, um, even though there was nothing wrong with the other ovary. And they also, just to be sure, took out the appendix. And I haven't really had, like, a major physical or anything ever since. Um, And I'm just wondering if I'm feeling great and everything, and I just want to... I just want to kind of check to see intuitively. I feel like it's, it's you know, everything's healing and, um, and everything. And I, when I had a glimpse of your podcast last week, I was really fascinated by the fact that you were helping somebody rebuild their gallbladder or something after they mm-hmm. had it removed. Mm-hmm. That right. is like super woo. <laughs> um, <laughs> <I just, laughs> so, yes, it so is. I, super woo woo. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I'm i just incredibly intrigued. And, I mean, my first question is, is like, is everything sort of, is it sort of healing, is everything healing properly in my body? And the second question would be, is is it is it even, like, remotely possible to um, rebuild some of the stuff that was taken out? Mm-hmm. Yes and yes. It is it is possible. And, and I had... This question I was telling you about this baby that was born with a third of her brain and her mom said to me, will that show up on the scans? And I said, it may, because there's actually a story on my site about a friend of mine whose baby 20 some years ago was a four year old who was having kidney problems. And they were talking about putting her on dialysis and putting her in the queue for a transplant. And I watched an energetic transplant happen on her and the doctor's a couple weeks later, she was in, and they took x-rays of her, and the doctor came out, and he said, the x-rays, something's wrong with the x-ray. We need to redo it. And so they redid it, and they came back, and they said, okay, this doesn't make any sense. The x-rays match the two we've taken today, but they don't match the ones that we've taken previously because she has a kidney of a four-year-old, and she has a kidney of like a preteen. So we don't know what to tell you. And so my girlfriend called me, and she said, okay, how old was the donor patient that you saw in the energetic transplant surgery? And I said, I don't know. She said, well, go back and look, do a replay. And I did. She knew I could do that because there's no time in the spirit world. It's, you know, time is a human concoction. So I went back and I said, it looks like, looks like a kid that's maybe, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, something like that. Well, this child now has a kidney that's showing up on the x-rays of a preteen. She's got her own four-year-old kidney. And long story short, she had no more problems. She's out of college now and 24 and doing great. So, yeah, stuff can show up on the scans. Even I mean, the, the capacity that the body has to heal is just phenomenal. Um, so let me get you on my radar. First, tell everybody where you're calling from, please. Ontario, Canada. Ontario. So I'm in, All right. in, a, in the big city of Toronto, Canada. Toronto. Beautiful big yeah. city. Okay. I'm going to connect to you and let me shoot energy. Okay. So you're not on hormones? They didn't put you on hormones when they took your ovaries out? No, they didn't. 
Yeah, you probably want to look at that. That's the first thing that came up is okay. is look at look at bioidentical hormones. Why don't you schedule a private session and let's just do a deep dive and we can we can yeah. go into this. But that's the first thing that came up. I think you really need to get on some bioidentical hormones. And those are the hormones that our body manufactures when we're young and fertile and we have ovaries. And um, let's talk about that. Just go to AskJulieRyan.com and schedule a private session and we'll have a whole hour to really dive into all of this and, and get you some information. And we'll, we'll just see about if we get you some new ovaries, girl. Okay. Well, okay. Super all right. Okay. All Thanks right. for Thank calling. You. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Let's see who we have next. I have, hi, this is Julie. Hi, this is Julie. Who's this? What's your name? 323 area code. Oh, hi. This is Debbie. Hi. Hi, Debbie. How are you? Hi, Karen. I see you joined us. I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to put you on mute. I'll come back to you. Um, So you're Debbie from 323? Yes. Hi. How are you? Well, I'm doing okay, but um, about a few months ago, actually, you and I did a one-on-one session to work on my son, but today I'm calling about myself. Okay. Please and, tell everybody where you're calling from. Uh, Los Angeles. Okay. Well, I was right on that 323 area code. Yes, you were. Okay. So I've had irritable bowel syndrome for about 15 mm-hmm. years or so. And Julie, oh, I've geez. tried everything to deal with that, getting off the dairy, getting off everything I'm supposed to be off of. <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, just cycles back in every six to eight weeks, it seems like, no matter what I do. Okay. All right. Well, Debbie, let me get you on my radar and let's see what's going on. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, out to L.A. Perfect. All right. Heading out there. Got you. Okay. All right. So you have the dreaded overgrowth of candida yeast Uh-oh. is what's going on. And it's easy to fix. You can fix it with your diet. You can fix it with, I want you to get somebody to write a prescription for you for Nystatin, N-Y-S-T-A-T-I-N, Nystatin. It's an antifungal that kills yeast on contact. That is the missing link for somebody that has candida overgrowth, which is most of the time misdiagnosed as IBS. It's known as the missing diagnosis. Okay. Okay. Stay low on the food chain, Debbie. If God made it, eat it. If man made it, avoid it. Mm -hmm. If you're eating fruit, peel it. Stay away from fermented foods. That is just kerosene pouring on a fire. Mm. Okay, because when we have an overgrowth of candida, our stomachs and our intestines become fermentation factories. So anything that's fermented, whether it be sauerkraut or wine or booze or beer or pickles or whatever, Anything that's fermented, stay away from it until you get your your GI system feeling better. Never for the rest of your life let anybody put a slice of lemon in your water, ever, because it's full of yeast on the peel. Okay. And one other, one other big thing is freeze your leftovers. Okay. If you have leftovers, don't leave them in the fridge. Freeze them and reheat them because as soon as we put them in the fridge overnight, they start decomposing and they get a bunch of yeast on them. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So Google candida overgrowth, and if you don't have somebody that will write a prescription for you, then go get some olive leaf extract. You can oh, get it at the health food store. Okay. I have clients that have, have not been able to get somebody to write a prescription for Nystatin for them, and that's what they give babies for thrush. So it just stays in the GI tract. It's not going to no side effects except it kills the yeast but try the olive leaf extract i would prefer you do nice satin but if you can't get it then do the olive leaf extract and that should help perfect okay all right girl thanks for calling i hope you feel better have a good day bye-bye you too bye-bye all righty hi karen hi karen hi how are you i i you have a recent follow, so you looked pretty awesome, and I'm calling in. <laughs> oh, well, I, terrific. 
I don't really have a medical question, at least now, but um, intuitively. Well, you can ask me any kind of question. Cool. Yeah, I'm right on this precipice uh, career-wise. Yeah. So I, I, I want to see what, what you see. Okay. First, please tell everybody where you're calling from. Sure. I am also calling from L.A. Okay. All right. I saw your area code, so I, I knew that, but I wanted everybody else to know that. Okay, great. Sure, yes. <laughs> What's going on with your career? What's your question? Um, uh, just how do you see the growth? I see a bigger picture for me, and, and so I don't know if you see my – my business taking off more than just one-on-one or am I going to be traveling and doing workshops and what are you doing now? Can you tell all of us what you're doing now? Uh, I do Reiki. I do healing work and I've just published my first book. So. Oh, terrific. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. So question is, will your business expand and involve travel is that what I'm hearing <clears throat> travel and workshop and be more more public more more than just one-on-one I get yes I can see you doing workshops with a bunch of people I think they'll start off small maybe 10 or less but I can see them going up to 50 or more at a workshop I think you have the potential to travel internationally is what I'm seeing and I see you in, uh, in my mind's eye, I see you in, for, I'm getting Portugal. I don't know. It's just what I'm getting. But in an outdoor setting. And I think of Portugal, I think of Fatima, um, you know, which is a shrine, basically, and a mm-hmm. holy place. And, but I see you in kind of a setting like that, where there's some kind of a spiritual setting, but it's outside. You're doing a talk or a workshop or something outside, and there's a bunch of people there. But you're part of a show where you're one of several presenters. Right. Because I do, I do feel collaboration, and I, you know, I want it meaningful and, and as you said, spiritual. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know yeah. when you could see things shifting. Uh, (laughs) I get in the next year, I'm also getting that one of your life lessons is to receive, that you're really good at making things happen as, as I am, as a lot of us are. And I think for those of us like that, it's harder for us to receive because we feel like we need to be doing something to propel whatever it is we're focused on. And, mm-hmm. and I've, I'm finding that if I just let things unfold naturally, which is very much against my constitution as a businesswoman, you know, I'm used to strategies and measurables and jazz like that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm finding that it's unfolding in ways that I couldn't have envisioned. And what I'm getting from that, Karen, and I think this pertains to you and probably to everybody listening, is when we focus on how something's going to transpire, we have the tendency perhaps to block other ways that might even be more fabulous. So yes. I, enc- I encourage you to stay focused on what the big picture is, that you want to share your, your work or you want to share your, your healing energy or whatever with others. But be open to how that's going to happen and in what time frame. Right. Okay. I yeah. use the analogy a lot, Karen, of we're all on the yellow brick road. We all have <laughs> on ruby slippers. <laughs> and we're all yeah. headed to the Emerald City, right? Mm-hmm. And, and every brick on the yellow brick road is a step that we're going to take and one brick may light up and we step on it and we end up in a field of blooming poppies. We may step on a different brick and we end up in a castle being chased by flying monkeys. They're both good. Everything Mm -hmm. leads to the Emerald city Mm -hmm. and we judge things as good or bad in our human form, but in actuality and spirit world, everything's, everything's in our best interest. 
So you can't make a wrong decision. Every decision is right. Every decision is on your path. Every decision is leading you towards what you want to do, what your life's path is. So be, uh, I'm encouraging you to be open to how it, how it comes in and how it manifests. Does that make sense? Yes, of course. Thank you. Thanks, Karen, for calling in. What a great question. All right, everybody, we are about out of time for this week. So remember to submit your questions online, call in and join us next week. And what else? Sign up for my blog at AskJulieRyan.com. Register for a free session at AskJulieRyan.com. Schedule your private session, your private appointment at AskJulieRyan.com. And have a wonderful weekend. I hope it's a blast for you. And those of you in the snow, stay warm. Hope it melts soon. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Twitter at Ask Julie Ryan and like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. For information on how you can ask Julie your question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com.